Florida's mild climate can bring out the best in landscape greenery. Here, warm, humid conditions promote lush growth of tropical plants from all over the world. But while some exotics may be welcome additions to any yard, others can cause trouble. Some exotics even thrive to the extent that they move into places where they aren't welcome. One such species is the latest threat to Florida's natural habitat, old world climbing fern. This invasive weed wraps itself around trees and underbrush, smothering native vegetation in its path. But there's a way to keep Florida's native plants from being threatened with extinction by old world climbing fern, a method that calls upon anyone caring for lawns to search and destroy, to search for and destroy old world climbing fern. Now, let's take a look at the effect this weed is having on Florida's natural landscape. Old world climbing fern has definitely made its mark on the state. Currently, the fern covers more than 100,000 acres throughout South and Central Florida. The hardest hit regions are protected natural areas, including Everglades National Park, Boxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge, and Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary. A lot of these invasive plants, when at first sight, they actually they look good. Many of them are pretty. We brought them in because they're pretty. Uh, but then when we start to look at them closer, we start to realize the damage that they're, they're causing to our, our native habitats. Uh, it's green. It looks, it looks like it should be there. And so uh, most people don't understand it. I think there's the, the media has done a good job of, of running this issue. But in general, people don't understand the seriousness of the threat. And it's really one of the worst forms of pollution in that it continues to spread on its own. And you can stop a smokestack from spewing smoke, but you can't stop a, an exotic plant from growing. Park managers are especially concerned about old world climbing fern because it's hard to keep it from reproducing. Like all ferns, it's spread by releasing tiny spores, which are often carried by the wind and to travel long distances into the state's remote natural areas. But efforts are underway to stop the invasion of this fern. The Florida Exotic Pest Plant Council, with the help of local, state, and federal agencies, is developing a statewide management plan. The council believes the key to controlling the growth of this invasive species is to get residents involved as soon as possible. There are some real advantages to jumping on this problem plant right now. At the minimum, uh, with, as rapidly as it's expanding in South Florida and its potential to move up at least into Central Florida, uh, anything that we can do right now to control it will keep us from spending maybe a hundred to a thousand times as much money in the future clearing it out of maybe just endangered species habitat. Understanding the destructive effect of old world climbing fern is only the beginning. Homeowners and residents need to properly identify and destroy this fern in their own backyards. Let's start with identification. Although this plant is called a fern, it actually grows much like a vine. It climbs over the ground or high into trees. It has oblong leaflets and a wiry stem. If you turn the leaves over, some of them have a row of spores along the back. If residents aren't sure whether or not they have old world climbing fern in their yard, a sample can be brought to their local county extension office, water management district office, or Department of Environmental Protection regional biologist. Homeowners need to be careful to transport samples in a sealed bag to keep from spreading spores. Residents are also encouraged to contact the Florida Exotic Pest Plant Council website at www.fleppc.org to report any sightings of old world climbing fern. Once homeowners have identified the plant, the next step is choosing the right herbicide to get rid of it. When you come into the Lawn and Garden Center looking for an herbicide to treat old world climbing fern, you're going to be bombarded with a wide selection. Current research trends show us that Roundup works best. Roundup comes in a range of concentrations from ready to use to industrial strength. The most effective varieties in killing old world climbing fern are brush color and super concentrate. The best way for homeowners to be sure an herbicide will work correctly is to carefully follow the directions. The label gives instructions about how to dilute the chemical and proper application techniques. 
the label will also tell you what kind of weather conditions are appropriate, what other pests, including pest plants, that this chemical will affect. Roundup is a very interesting chemical. It is absorbed by the leaves of the plants and moves throughout the system. We call that translocation, so you must use care, and the label will give you those guidelines. In most cases, the herbicide should be applied directly to the bush or foliage that has been overgrown with old world climbing ferns. If the fern has traveled up into a tree, it may be necessary to first cut the vine, wrap it up, and then apply the herbicide to the lower areas of the fern. This will kill any part of the vine that has traveled into the upper areas of the tree. Homeowners need to be careful to avoid spraying the herbicide on desirable plants in their yards. Any pieces of the fern should be disposed of in a sealed bag or in any other way that keeps the spores from spreading. If residents have any questions about herbicide application, they can contact their local county extension agent. Floridians can make a difference in the fight against old world climbing ferns. When residents destroy the sweet in their own backyards, they're not only protecting their communities, but all of Florida's beautiful natural areas.